welcome to part two of the pay-per-view review, Starcade 83, 84, 85, and 86. We'll try something different here. That's right. We're going to go WCW, we're going to go old school, which we don't have no record to keep up with it because there ain't another one anymore. So we ain't got a race to get before the new one starts. That's true. So. But, but, but uh, I really want to take this first one because that's a hilarious name. Okay. So Starcade 83, November the 24th, 1983. The first match was the Assassins, number one and number two, with Paul Jones... Defeating Rusif Rufus 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 R. Jones and Bugsy McGraw. Yep. You heard that right. Those are some weird names. In eight minutes and eleven seconds, Bugsy, <laughs> Bugsy. In match number two, it was Kevin Sullivan and Martin Levine with Gary Hart as their manager defeating Scott McGee and Johnny Weaver. Isn't In six man? minutes and forty-three seconds, that could be either the son of the Weaver Lock or it could be the daddy. 83, I don't know, falls in there, could fall in there, being the weaver lock dude or what, you know. I guess he's going out, maybe. Uh, could be. And then Scott McGee probably worked the whole match, yeah. <laughs> the third matchup, I but don't hey, know, you know what? what? To find out, you watch on the network for only nine ninety nine. There you go. The third match was Abdullah the Butcher. Yes, don't let him bleed on you. Plug. Do what? Plug for the network. Plug. That's true. Or plug in the network. Plug, plug, plug. Make sure you plug all your pores. And yes. don't get any blood yes. from Abdullah the Butcher. As he defeated Carlos Colon, and their foreheads almost match. Yeah. And almost like take them together, put them together, and the grooves in like go into each other. Yes. It's kind of creepy looking. And that was four minutes and 30 seconds. Kind of a short match for them, awesome. too. The next match was Bob Orton Jr. and Dick Slater defeating Mark Youngblood and Wahoo McDaniels in 14 minutes and 48 seconds. Very interesting. Had two Indians on one side and had the two hard of. Hardhead, uh, yeah. Tough as nails. I was about to say, are you going to get it out yet? Tough as, a, you figure it out tough as a Cincinnati steak. You don't have any clue. I didn't know Orton and Slater teamed up together. Well, now you see it. It's now I see it. It's right there in black and white. You can see it live on the network for only nine ninety nine. Oh, on. I get another good one. You get another good one. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a clown. That's what I heard. So really, that's what I heard. If and they let him win. If you listen to the song, he's a clown. So they let him win. It's not really dressed as a clown, it's just a, it's just a song. So, Before your time, go ahead. Very much before my time. I wasn't yeah. even born yet. Because Charlie Brown was, yes. not a real, was not a wrestler as a clown. This book. Charlie Brown from Peanuts. Song. Charlie Brown <laughs> defeated the great Kabuki, who was the NWA television champion. And he was accompanied to the ring by Gary Hart. And it was a title versus mask match. So apparently Charlie Brown was a masked man. And he won the title. What? Yeah, because Great Kabuki don't have that. There you go. And so that means that Charlie Brown is your new NWA television champion. I wonder if Snoopy was there. Did you give the time? <laughs> no, because it's so stupid. <laughs> 10 minutes and 35 seconds. Well, speaking of Snoopy and Dog, the next we had the Dog Collar match. Oh, Lord. And it was 16 minutes and 8 seconds as Roddy Piper defeated Greg the Hammer of Valentine, and that's famous. Dog call match. That is one of their famous matches. They love it. Yes, they do. And then the seventh match, you had Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and Jay Youngblood. Why was it Jay Youngblood with Mark Youngblood? Because Mark was with Wahoo McDaniel. No. <laughs> put the Youngbloods together, you put Ricky Steamboat with Wahoo McDaniel. Well, when you watch Starcade 83 on the network, for 99, you can find out. Maybe they'll tell you why Mark and Jay are not teaming together. There you go. And they defeated the Briscoe brothers, Jack and Jerry, who were the NWA World Tag Team Champions. I say they were because they lost the tag team titles to Ricky and Jay in 13 minutes and 24 seconds. And then the eighth match in the main event of Starcade 83, and it lasted 23 minutes and 49 seconds, as and it was for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship with your referee, special guest referee, Gene Konitsky. And it was in a steel cage, steel folks. We had everything. We had the title, we had a special referee, and it had a steel cage as your champion, Harley Race, was defeated by the nature boy, Ric Flair. Well, his reign, so that might have been his first reign. I say it was very early as reign, champion. Yeah. Now we have Starcade '84, November the twenty second, nineteen eighty four. Your first match. One of these related to Charlie Brown. <laughs> we had Denny Brown defeating Mike Davis, the NWA World Junior Heavyweight Championship match. So Denny Brown 
is now, so Charlie Brown is your television champion. He was the year before. Another year before. Now, Denny Brown is your junior heavyweight champion in 5 minutes and 38 seconds. Your next match was 4 minutes on the nose. 4 minutes, folks, as Brian Adidas, Adidas. Adidas, like the shoes. Yes, Brian Adidas defeated Mr. Ito. Don't know who either one of those are. It's a quick match. It's probably Brian. why they're the first two matches. Like Brian's like, He's a whole Do you remember him? I remember Brian, yes. But yet you couldn't remember Primo Epico's name. What the crap? Because I didn't say Primo Epico, because I want to go right. Primo Epico, there's somebody else. Yeah, they're coming back. So it's but how, did, traffic. but how can you not remember who they were? I don't know who they were. It's so like, sad. I didn't feel like typing it to you. Type it. I like all the spoilers. Anyway, the third matchup was for the NWA Florida Heavyweight Championship. Wow. When Florida meant something, the golf couch. Does Dusty had his finger points to the exactly. 11 minutes and 43 seconds, Jesse Barr retained his title against Mike Graham. And that's why Florida Heavyweight Championship was on there, because Mike, you know, his dad and all of them were all Florida. Yes. Rest in peace, sir. Did the same thing your daddy did. It's pretty bad, isn't it? Yes. Is. Yeah, it's kind of bad. It's you have to kind of research that. Uh, yes, yeah. they do. The next match was a, a tag team elimination match. It was five minutes and twenty six seconds. That's it for elimination. You had the assassins and Buzz Taylor defeat the Zumba no. Express. Just one assassin. Oh, the assassin, the assassin and assassin. Buzz Taylor defeat the Zumba so Express. Either number one or number two quit. Yeah, I don't know. Elijah Keem and Kareem Muhammad with <laughs> Paul Jones. Sorry. Weird. Oh, see, there we go. Paul Jones was with the Assassins, and then the following year, the Assassin is going against his team. So they must have broke up. They must have broke up! And then you had the fifth match. You had Manny Fernandez, ladies and gentlemen, defeating the NWA Brass Knuckles champion. 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 <laughs> Easy for me to say. That's I don't understand what Brass Knuckles Championship is, though. That's kind of weird. Is it flight when any rules can go there? I don't know. Like I said, Network. So Manny Fernandez defeated Black Bart, who was the champion, to win the championship. And Black Bart was managed by James J. Dillon, because this is before he got real big into managing yes. and had the full horsemen. He had random people. He was kind of like um, the Harvey Whippleman of managers before the full horsemen came around. He had just jobber peoples. He did. And this was 7 minutes and 35 seconds. Up next was a tuxedo street fight loser leave town match, 4 minutes 35 seconds, as Paul Jones, the manager, defeated the boogie woogie man, Jimmy Valiant. So Jimmy Valiant had to go, Weird. Hello, boogie woogie. And the seventh match, Ron Bass. Who became out while Ron Bass? Against Betsy. And he's the NBA Middle Atlantic Heavyweight Champion. And he was accompanied the ring by J.J. Dillon. Defeated Dick Slater by disqualification in 9 minutes and 12 seconds. Do you see J.J. Dillon just has so much random people? He does. Up next was a tag team match. You had Ivan and Nikita Koloff defeating Ole Anderson and Keith Lar Larson with Don Canoodle in 15 minutes and 28 seconds. Who and who? Which one? With Keith Larson and Don Canoodle? Yeah. Don Canoodle, you don't know. I mean, they talk about him all the time. That's J.R. Yeah, we talk about him. But really Keith, Larson. Keith Larson, again, network, nine and nine. <laughs> should get money for this. The, Ding! Every time we say it, yes. Right. <laughs> uh, the ninth match was Tully Blanchard, who was your NWA World Television Champion. Finally, they got something better, better than Charlie Brown. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it was for the championship plus $10,000 as Tully Blanchard defeated Ricky Steamboat in 13 minutes and 17. Up next, your 10th match of the day, it was Wahoo McDaniels, who is your United States champion, defeating Billy Graham. Is that one of that superstar Billy Graham? Superstar, not the preacher. In 4 minutes and 18 seconds. Wow, that's a quick, that was a quick United States title match. I think Billy Graham was kind of on his way out, though. Probably. And Wahoo probably was too. <laughs> in the 11th match, the main event, two years in a row, Ric Flair is the main event. Well, as we keep going, we'll see you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ric Flair defeated Dusty Rhodes by knockout to retain his NWA World Heavyweight Championship. And is that a million? That's a million dollars. A million, million buckaroos with guest referee Joe Frazier. Got the boxer in there. The boxer, man, because it was by knockout. 12 minutes, 12 seconds. And it was not the longest match of the night. Which one was the longest? 15, 28, right here. Don match. Yep. With old Don Canule. <laughs> Don Canule, guys. Okay, Stark 85 was November 28, 1985, and we come from two 
different locations. That oh, sounds, yeah, like, yeah. sounds like somebody else we know, don't Yeah, they we? shouldn't be trying to do like... Do now, the match is going to be kind of squirrely because they film one and then film with the other location. Oh, that's stupid. So, let's start off with match number one from the Greensboro Coliseum as Crusher... Cru uh, I used to use Crusher Khrushchev. Yeah, okay. Crusher Khrushchev defeated Sam Houston. We know who Sam Houston is. Yeah, we know him. For the vacated NWA Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Championship in 9 minutes and 30 seconds and Crusher Khrushchev became Smash of Demolition. Oh, well, that's him. That is him. Very nice. Second match, Manny Fernandez from the Omni defeated Abdullah the Butcher with Paul Jones in a Mexican death match in 9 minutes 7 seconds. Back to Greensboro in the third match, Ron Simmons, uh, Ron Simmons, <laughs> Ala Ron Bass, I see Ron, I always say Ron Simmons all of a sudden. Ron Bass defeated Black Bart, oh my lord, with J.J. Dillon. Oh, they must have split up. In a Texas death match, bull rope match in 8 minutes and 34 seconds. And then the fourth match, James J. Dillon with Black Bart defeated Ron Bass in a Texas bull rope <laughs> match in 3 minutes and 29 seconds. So I guess if Ron Bass won, he must have got a chance to face James J. Dillon. So Ron Bass left the group. Yeah, he's manager. Manager. Yes. And then the fifth match that we jumped back to the Omni was Billy Graham defeating the Barbarian with Paul Jones by disqualification in an arm wrestling match with no time. But then... <laughs> well, there you go. The sixth match, Billy Graham defeated the Barbarian with Paul Jones by disqualification. Three minutes and two seconds. So we had all the rest of the match first, and then we had a match. Oh, then we jumped back to the Greensboro Coliseum for match number seven as Buddy Landell with J.J. Dillon defeated Terry Taylor, who was, at the time, the NBA National Heavyweight Champion in 10 minutes and 30 seconds. So Buddy Landell is your new National Heavyweight Champion. Yes. Number eight, the Minnesota Wrecking Crew, Ole Anderson and Arn Anderson, the... NWA National Tag Team Champions defeated Wahoo McDaniel and Billy Jack Hands. That's Billy Jerk. That is Billy Jerk, the man <laughs> who's suing WWE. Uh, 9 minutes and 28 seconds. As we jump back to Greensboro oh Coliseum for the ninth match, it's Magnum TA defeated Tully Blanchard with Baby Doll in I Quit Steel Cage match for the United States Championship in 14 minutes and 43 seconds. So, oh, Magnum made Tully say I quit. The good thing they uh, they thought about this, they thought this out, because mm -hmm. James J. Dillon and all his people were all in the same <laughs> thing. Because what what would have happened if he had to be at the Omni too? Good thing Buddy Landell had his match there. Because <laughs> yeah. you never know. A lot of these promotions don't think ahead. They don't let this. Like, well, I don't know how this dude, but he's in he's in he's Omni in Atlanta. <laughs> we're in Greensboro. Not good. Um, and then we had the tenth match with Jimmy Valiant, who uh, last year had a loser leave town match. Uh -huh. It was a different town. It was. So there you go. Jimmy Valiant. They didn't say, they didn't say leave the Federation. They said leave, 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 leave town. town. So when he got in his car and left, I mean, yeah. hey. You're done. You never can wrestle in that town again. Good luck with that. And Miss Atlanta Lively. Ron Garvin. It's kind of weird, ain't it? I could see Jimmy Garvin do that before Ron Garvin. Oh, yeah. Ron Garvin is a one ugly woman. <laughs> 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 Defeated the Midnight Express. Bobby Eaton and Dennis Cordray. 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 Yeah, yeah, you're right. Good enough. With Jim Cornette in Atlanta Street Fight. Thank God they were in Atlanta. That makes better sense. Right, because what if they were in the Greensboro Cross here in the call of the Atlanta Street Fight? Six minutes and 36 seconds. The 11th match, back to the Greensboro Coliseum, and the final and the main event for the Greensboro Coliseum was the Rock and Roll Express. Ricky Morton, Robert Gibson defeated Ivan and Nikita Koloff, who were the champions in a steel cage match for the NWA World Tag Team Championships in 12 minutes and 22 seconds. Oh, baby. So do they simulcast this so these people can see these I matches? don't know. I'm going to watch it on the network for 99 Right. <laughs> and in the 12th match, Dusty Rhodes defeated... Oh, two years in a row. Look at it. Dusty <laughs> Rhodes defeated Ric Flair, who was the NWA World Heavyweight Champion, in 22 minutes and 6 seconds to win the championship. And they never again did two... Matt, two shows at one time. That's what they never did when they did WrestleMania 2 in three smart. locations. Now we, have three a, times. Yes. now we have a Russell, Russell K. <laughs> See, you got me with Ron Simmons. <laughs> we got Star K86. <laughs> November the 20th. They don't have taglines on these? I love taglines! <laughs> they may, but I'm not going to. One's a flare for the goal, so hey, there you go. See? Pick which one you think it is. Star K86. <laughs> Pick which one you think. I'm going to say it's the first one when he took an Arnie race that was a flare for the gold. Probably, and then they did it later and on. And then the million dollar challenge was the one for the million dollars. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> November the 27th of 1986, the first match, Tim Horner. 
Wasn't he a partner of Brad Armstrong? He was! Very good! Yes, he was! The yeah. Lightning Express! Then why was uh, Brad in the second match? <laughs> uh, Tim Horner and Nelson they were, Royal. They weren't together as a team yet. Nelson Royal. Yes. Watch it, because we don't know who he is. Defeated Rocky and Don Canoodle. Yes. Canoodle. Yeah. That's like it. That. And he got away in the second match. It's Brad Armstrong. I didn't say who's wrestling. Uh, Jimmy Govin with Precious to a draw. Probably a really good match. Yes. The third match, we go from one great family, the Armstrongs, <laughs> to another great family with Hector Guerrero. Yes. Um, the the bird. What's his name? The Gobbly Gooker. The Gobbly Gooker. That's him, man. That's sad. Hector Guerrero and Baron Von Ruschke defeated Shaka. Shaka. Shaka Watley? Mm -hmm. Who in the world? And the Barbarian. These <laughs> names. These names. <laughs> the fourth I match. I thought Baron Von Ruschke was in the eighth grade. Oh, the fourth. <laughs> Why is he there? there? Why is he there? He may be in the ADA, ADA after this one, so. Look at the time. Look, look, hey, look on Wikipedia and see when he changed. It'll probably tell you. I thought he was, a, thought he was an AWA lifer. Well, he wasn't. Up next was a team, the match number four was the Russian team, Crusher Krushkov, <laughs> Smash from Demolition. Steady go, <laughs> And Ivan Koloff. That's right. Okay, imagine what Jimmy were. Who are. <laughs> The NBA United States Tag Team Champions, they defeated the Kansas Jayhawks, Bobby Jagger and Dutch Mantel in no DQ match. Kansas J Jayhawks? What is that? And I did not put the time on here. Oh, no, like, now these have any times. That's right. They didn't put no times. What? They put no times on these things. But Kansas Jayhawks, is that like a team? Is that a football team or something? It's a basketball team, yes. Weird people. Bobby Jaggers. What is it supposed to be? Like, Dirty like, Dutch Mantel. Like Mick Jagger? I have no clue. All I know is Dutch Mantel. So. Dutch Mantel! Yes, he wrestled, ladies and gentlemen. He wasn't just a manager. And he's going to be... <laughs> he's going to be at the last Russell Cage! I thought he was the same, too. So, I mean, it's weird. Is he done? Because he's as, he is Dutch it Mantel. He said Dutch Mantel. Formerly known as... No, I think he's done. Formerly known as... When he was his other name? Instead of Coulter. That's it. When he was on his little scooter and rode off in the sunset, I guess that was it. Sad, ain't it? Because they is. could be using that brain for something. You know, 20 she, he still uses his Seth Coulter. That is weird. The fifth match we have Wahoo McDaniel. We trace off again, folks. We always do it. Wahoo McDaniel defeated Rick Rude with Paul Jones. And before he was Ravishing. In an Indian strap match. Yes. Why well, is it going to be Indian? I don't know. Maybe and so. the next match. This was for the NWA Central States Heavyweight Championship. As your champion, Sam Houston, defeated Bill Dundee by disqualification. Yes. That William Regal's manager, yes. Yes. <laughs> and Jamie Dundee, who's PG-13's daddy. Yes. It's weird, isn't it? Anyway, we got number two. Oh, SWA, where Jeff Jarrett wrestled. It's not NWA. Um, NWA. Jimmy Valiant with Big Mama. Who was Big Mama? Was that was that uh, was that Jimmy Carr? I don't know. Big Mama was on that one. Oh, uh, she was always Miss Selena Lively. Uh, with Big Mama defeated Paul Jones in a hair versus hair match, and Manny Fernandez was locked in a cage. So Paul Jones lost his hair. Oh, he went bald, bald. That's why he wore the hat. In the next match, Big Bubba Rogers with Jim Cornette defeated Ron Garvin in a street fight. So yes, Big Mama was not Ron Garvin because he was in the next match. I said Jimmy Carr. Because he was Miss Atlanta Live, and so was Jimmy Garvin, Big Mom. That's what I would say. Watch That's it. Funny. See. Big Bubba Rogers. Yes, the Hall of Famer. Watch well, it, see. Not as Big Bubba Rogers. Him, you tell, well, he had to shave his beard off. That'd be an ugly woman. Ooh. But, you know, I'm just saying. You know, I don't know what you're saying. Big Bubba Rogers can't be in the Hall of Fame. Big Bubba's beard. So stupid. Number nine, Tully Blanchard with J.J. Dillon. Finally getting into the horseman stuff now. We are. Defeated Dusty Rhodes, who was the NBA World Television Champion. And won the belt in a first blood match. Oh, those are gone, by the way, son. Done. Gone forever. Unless TNA decides to do them. And you know, nobody will watch it. So. Yeah. Up next was the Skywalker match. Oh. So that's what this one was. It was Skywalker, yes. And not Luke Skywalker. No. Nope. This was the Road Warriors. But you Hulk know that's where they came up with Paul it. Paul yes. Defeating the Midnight Express with Bobby Eaton, Dennis Condry, and Jim Cornette, and Big Bubba Rogers who got his big butt up there. And they all he come did down with Jim Cornette. Out. Blew his knees out. Yes, he did. It was a long way down. He was no, afraid of heights, and then boop. There's no other Royal Road Warriors are going to win. So of course. And then you had the eleventh match. Oh, the Rock and Roll Express. Ricky and Robert defeated the Anderson brothers. Arn and Ole. Why don't they just call them the Minnesota Wrecking Crew? Oh, maybe. 
and they changed it. Stupid! In a steel cage for the NWA World Tag Team Championship, so the Rock and Roll Express retained the belts. And in your main event, like four years in a row, it was for the NBA World Heavyweight Championship as your champion Ric Flair wrestled Nikita Koloff to a double disqualification when Nikita became good and people loved him. No, that seriously is four in a row because he started it is four, yes. He started 83 beating Harley. He was a challenger. Then, then he uh, defeated Dusty second time. The third one. Yes, he beat Harley See, for the by, title. And then by knockout beat Dusty, and yeah. then Dusty beat him, and then he is the champion again within that year, and then he uh, has a double DQ with Nikita. Oh, my gosh. This is the thing we're going to see for a while. Let's it's... keep up with that on Starcade. See how many times Flair goes in a row until, like, Eric Bischoff takes over. Flair, as we know him as the as the NBA John Cena. Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's but, it for part two, that's folks. It. That's it. That's it. Next week we'll do some more Starcades. Well, let's come up next to part three. Let's talk about that as we continue on our March Macho Madness, the In third April. round. We have Mike Hogan's bracket as I have Ric Flair, number one seed, taking on Tully Blanchard, number five seed. And we have number three seed, Hulk Hogan, Hollywood Hulk Hogan, taking on number two seed, Sting. And then Justin Carter bracket we have... Number eight seed, Rick Rude, taking on number four seed, Steve Austin. Number three seed, The Giant, taking on number two seed, Dusty Rhodes. So come on back to part three in a few clicks and see who will advance.